Well, sir, it's late afternoon as our scene opens now. And here in the kitchen of the small house halfway up on the next block, we discover Mr. Rushcook all by himself. The young man wears a hat on his head and a harassed expression on his face. At the moment, he's talking over the telephone. Listen. Oh, I see, Miss Tisdall. Yes. Well, uh, what time does she generally arrive home from taking her music lesson? Any minute now, huh? Will you please? I die, hoot to hoo. I die, hoot to hoo. I die, hoot to hoo. Aha. The telephone talker. Excuse me. Uh, all right, Miss Tisdall. You just tell Miller to give me a slight ring, if convenient, when she gets home. Thank you very much. Oh, I will. Goodbye. What's the idea, Ms. Tisdale, calling us up on the telephone? Well, I was the one that did the calling. Oh, you are, are you? All right, take off your coat. <laughs> you act like you're in a jolly mood. I am. Had an excellent afternoon at the office. I wish I was in a jolly mood. You find yourself downhearted and blue? Yeah. Take off your hat, then. Maybe that'd help. If I took off my hat, you'd get greatly excited. Oh, I don't know as I would. I've seen plenty of funny-shaped heads before. I think I'll leave my hat on for a while. Suit yourself. Where's Mama? Downtown, I expect. That's where she said she was going at dinner this noon. In that case, I see no reason why I shouldn't go in the other room and drape my little buddy on the Davenport. A short nap and a sweet dream is about my speed. Okay. What are you going to do? Please, I'll call up and see if Rooster Davis is home. How come the big telephone worked out? I'm in need of assistance from some of my various friends. Is there any assistance your old father can render? I'm afraid you'd get tough if I divulged the jam I'm in. In a jam, huh? Yeah. Nothing terrible serious. Nothing that can't be ironed out. Want Papa to help iron? I guess I'd better see a thing through on my own hook. Up to you, brain fog. Well, I'm journeying blithely into the front room. In case I'm wanted, hunt for me on the Devonport. Okay. Oh, by the way, I noticed neighbor Donahue sneaking along outside. How dared he loiter in our backyard? He was in the house here. With what object in view? I invited him over. Why? He attempted to give me a little assistance with the jam I'm in. Say, what is this jam, snake oil? Oh, you just get up on your hind legs, Gov. Has it got anything to do with you wearing your hat down over your ears like that? Being 100% downright frank with you, Gov, it has. You haven't hurt yourself, have you? No. Somebody throw ink in your hair? No. Have you ruined that good hat some way? No. Well, out with it. Maybe I had better confide in you at that, Gov. Sure, let's keep our troubles in the family as much as we can. What's the joke? To begin with, I've made an unwise mistake. All mistakes are unwise, a guy told me one time. What was yours? I thoughtlessly allowed Smelly Clark to practice on me. In what way? Smelly's learning to be a barber, you know. He works in his uncle's barber shop in Tawanda every Saturday. You never let him fool with your hair, did you? I admit I was reckless. I freely confess I should Take off that lid once. Uh, Let me give you the details first. Let me explain. No, take off that lid. I want to see how much damage is done. Well, it ain't anything that can't be doctored up okay. See, Smelly attempted... Holy smoke. I realize I look pretty funny, but I Margaret, think... Margaret, can... your mother's just about going to chew your ears off. I hope to get fixed up a little before she arrives Turn home. around That's once. What... Just about as bad in back as it is in front. What Smelly do it with, a knife and fork? No, he used regulation barber shears. I didn't know but what he knew enough about barber. I could do a better job than that with a hammer and cold chisel. Why don't you dig in, then? All it needs is to be evened up some. Mom won't care so much about the shortness. She figures a short haircut saves a guy money. You don't need haircuts so often. But if she sees how scraggly this is, she'll go through the roof. And how she'll go through the roof? Got any scissors handy? Right there on the table. I brought them down for Mr. Donahoe. Did he try to do some work on your hair? Yeah, that's why I invited him over. He didn't do me much good, though. Mm, I'll say he didn't. Hand me them scissors. I thought Smelly knew his stuff. Certainly led me to believe he did. Mm. He was kind of proud of the job he'd done on my hair. His firstborn haircut. See what I'm trying to get across? Here's the scissors. Mm, thanks. Where'd this bloody operation take place? Over to his house. Look out now, you don't jab me. I won't jab anybody. Come on over here where the light's better. Was anybody else present at Smelly's during the progress of this tragedy? His grandmother was. She'd done a little hair cutting herself. I knew? Yeah. How come? She was dissatisfied with Smelly's work. 
Oh, well, I hope. Of course, that was after Smelly left the room. We didn't want to hurt his feelings, see. I wouldn't say Grandma had done so hard herself. No, she never. She's a pretty old lady and don't see very good. After Grandma ripped out a little more of your scalp, you come on home here, huh? Yeah. And then I looked in the mirror. First time I got a good glimpse of myself. I like to faint it. Went over and asked Mr. Donahue to help me first thing. What were you talking to Miss Tizzle about when I come in? I was trying to get in touch with Mildred. She's a girl and probably pretty handy with scissors. I figured she'd know about as much about amateur haircutting as the next party. Listen, how many different people have worked on you so far this afternoon? Well, first Smelly, then his grandmother, then Mr. Donahue, then me, now you. Oh, you took a few licks at it yourself, huh? Yeah, in the looking glass. Didn't work out satisfactory, though. I kept slicing off more hair than I intended to. Mm. And in the wrong places. And in the wrong places. Five barbers are operated on you today, huh? Oh, not five. Well, sure five. Smelly, his grandmother, Donahue, you and myself. Guess it does make five at that. There's an element of lunacy in this strange, unnatural business. Come on and get going, Dove. Mom will be home soon. Well, square around then. I'll tackle the back first. Don't cut off any more hair. Just even it up as much as you can. How can I do that without cutting off more hair? Maybe I can set it on fire and melt it the way you want it. Well, don't slice off any big gobs. Just kind of snip it here and there. Mm. Well, there are fathers within a rabbit's punch of here that sometimes wonder why their kids don't have good sense. Well, I didn't know this was going to happen. Listen, I'll tell you exactly how Smelly hooked me. Stand still, please. I met him as I was coming home from school. We chatted about this, that, and the other thing, and finally he says, Look who cuts your hair. I says, I generally patronize the Butler House Hotel barbershop, Smelly. I got a friend that works a second chair. Well, he's not up to snuff, whoever he is, says Smelly. What you need for your type head is the feather flow chic dip. Sheep dip? Chic dip. You know them good-looking guys that loaf around the Sahara Desert? No. Oh, you've seen them in the movies millions of times. Well, anyway, the hair kind of dips around fancy, see? Professional barbers like Smelly call their haircut the chic dip haircut. Professional barbers like Smelly ought to be taken out behind the machine shop and shot. Well, I won't argue with you there. Oh! I oh, beg your pardon. How are you coming along? Not bad. I'm getting it more even than it was. Fine. Well, anyway, to get ahead with what I was saying, Smelly says, Gook, what you need for your type head is the feather flow chic dip. It's all the go up in Tawanda. Uh-huh. You're pulling. Well, I can't help it. Doing the best I can here. I don't feel like suffering. Guy better feel lucky he's got an old man that'll give him a helping hand. So before I knew it, Smelly had me in his mother's kitchen with a towel around my neck. There wasn't any mirrors around, so I didn't know he was botching up my skull. I just sat there thinking to myself, hot dog, I'm getting a free haircut and a feather flow chic dip at that. Uh, Thomas A. Edison used to say there's one born every minute. How's it going back there? I'm afraid I'm getting in deep waters. Probably are. That's the way everybody's been this afternoon. Smelly and his grandmother and Mr. Donahue all tackled my head with great confidence. And look at the spot where they put me. Maybe I can get out of the woods here. Well, do the best you can. The feather flow chic dip haircut, according to Smelly, was inspired by the 1942 model streamlined airplanes that are just coming out. You know, tricycle landing gear, four motors, all metal. What's the matter? Strike a snag? Afraid I'll have to give up, Pete. Ain't you doing any good? No. I got a short distance of scalp scrape evened up, and then I find I've lost my bearing. Right now, you're worse off than you ever were. Well, keep at it, Gov. Dive in blind if you want. I'll get there. Probably for me, anyway. You look like a peeled banana. Mine's going to come down on my neck with both feet. Hello? Oh, hello, Mildred. Your mother tell you I called? Huh? Well, look, you going to be home for the next half hour? I see. Not having an early supper or anything, are you? Huh? Well, I'd like to drop around and see you a little bit if it's okay. Got a favor I'd like to have you do. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you when I arrive. Yeah. Okay, Millard. Be right over. Yes, yeah, right away. Goodbye, Millard. I'll let her have a shot at it. Good stuff. Do I stack up pretty silly? Yeah. Well, can't be helped. I'm squeezed in a groove where I'm forced to snatch at straws. Axle grease. Yeah. 
Mildred will make the sixth barber that's worked on you today. Yeah. And still you won't have a haircut worth shaking a stick at. No. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> 